the heart has four valves, one for each chamber of the heart, whereas um, the tricuspid and the mitral valves separate the upper chambers and the lower chambers of the heart. The aortic and pulmonary valve separates the lower chambers of the heart to the major vessels that exit the heart. When the valves become diseased, the heart has often has to work harder in order, in order to provide blood flow to the body. When the heart valves become diseased, there's usually two types of possibilities. Either the valve starts becoming leaky and they start um, regurgitating blood backwards, or they become narrowed over time, and that's called stenosis. Um, patients can be either born with uh, heart valve disease, um, then that's something that's called congenital heart valve disease, or it could be something that's acquired over time, such as in the case with endocarditis or rheumatic heart disease. When valve becomes severely diseased, patients often start to, uh, complaining of symptoms, and the most common symptom in this situation would be shortness of breath. When patients start developing shortness of breath, it's often a sign that their valve has uh, deteriorated to the point where the, the leakage or the stenosis has become quite severe. Other symptoms include palpitations or rapid heart rates. Um, the patient can also feel fatigue, or sometimes patients can just uh, experience uh, a decrease in their stamina and a decrease in their exercise capacity. When um, valve starts becoming diseased to a severe point, um, at that time often treatment is required, and the treatment is often require surgery, and uh, we can do either repair of the valve or replacement of the valve. Whenever possible, we like to repair the valve um, if we feel that the repair is going to be durable. However, when the repair is not possible, then we'll need to replace the valve either with a biologic valve or a mechanical valve. There are pros and cons of each types of valves, and uh, the advantage of a mechanical valve is that these valves are much more durable. Typically, they can last for an entire lifetime, However, the patients will need to take a blood thinner called Coumadin. When, um, when the patients do not want to take Coumadin, or if the patients are, are older patients, then a biologic valve may be a better option for these patients. Um, in fact, most of our patients receive a biologic valve. The biologic valves are made of either a cow or a pig, and sometimes they can come from a horse as well. Um, these valves are advantageous because you do not need to take Coumadin for them. However, they have a limited life durability and they typically last about 15 years, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. Um, so therefore, usually when we have younger patients, um, they tend to go for mechanical valves, older patients go for biological valves. However, that's not true uh, all the time. And um, to, to pick the right type of valve for you, um, please uh, talk to your cardiologist or your surgeon and they can help uh, provide uh, some answers for you in terms of deciding which is the most typical and uh, which is the most appropriate valve for you. Um, other types of uh, valve procedures, uh, when we have patients who are very, very sick and who are otherwise not a candidate for a standard operation, these patients may be able to go for what's called a, a TAVR or a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And uh, during these type of procedures, a cardiologist and a surgeon working together can uh, use a wire to cross the disease valve, typically the aortic valve, and then use a balloon to push the disease valve aside and then deploy a new valve over, uh, over uh, the um, previous valve. And uh, this can be done through a puncture in the groin or through small incisions in the chest. The more traditional uh, ways of, for us to repair or replace a valve requiring us to do what's called a full sternotomy and this allows us to enter the chest. This requires an incision about six inches over the, over the sternum or the middle of the chest that allows a gain entry into the chest. This is the most versatile incision for, uh, that allows us to, to take care of almost every type of valve procedures. However, when a patient only has a single valve that's diseased and needs repair, uh, often in these patients we can do the surgery through a much smaller incision, typically about two to four inches either through the upper part of the chest or the lower part of the chest or on the side of the chest. Um, these type of what's called minimally invasive procedures can be done uh, through with um, other types of technologies such as a camera or a robot um, that can help the surgeon navigate inside the chest through these small incisions and allows the surgeons to do the work that they need to do. Therefore, um, as you can see, there are many different types of valve procedures and uh, many different types of techniques that we can use to help patients with severe valve disease. Uh, at the Cleveland Clinic, we
can treat almost all type of valve disease and we have the whole range of different techniques that we can use. So if you have valve disease and you would like to have more information about it as well as to discuss what is the most appropriate type of surgery for you, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you.